Hello, drifting remains and German biplanes. Welcome to another installment of Corrupted Cover Art, where we take an in-depth look at the artwork of a particular band's discography and completely misinterpret it, for the most part. This time around, the band in the hot seat is none other than Canada's own Gorguts, the technical death metal band with a name unfortunately similar to a brand of squeezable yogurt. The first significant Gorguts recording was the wonderfully catchy And Then Comes Lividity, a four-song demo with a toasty little intro track to get us all in the mood before playing some fairly standard old-school death metal. Gorguts is generally well known for how strange and complex their music can get, but they were still goo-goo-gaga babies back in 1990 and had not yet developed a totally unique sound. I don't hear very many people talk about this demo, and fewer still mention the accompanying artwork. You may be wondering, hey Buster... What's the deal with this magnificent melting man capturing my heart right about now? Well, <laughs> allow me to explain. The tape is titled And Then Comes Lividity, likely referring to the stage of death at which the flesh begins to discolor. This stage is known as liver mortis and can be seen all throughout pop culture, from the grayness of zombies to that distinctly moldy hue of background corpses to the performance art trio The Blue Man Group. But, curiously enough, Gorguts chose to use a simple black and white sketch as the artwork for the demo about discoloration. Well, perhaps this man's specific hue is confidential information, and we're only given a taste of just how discolored he really is, but I feel that there's more at play here. Gorguts clearly doesn't want us thinking about color. You see, livid is another way of saying extremely angry. The man in question could be furious for a number of reasons, Maybe it's because someone strapped him to a wall with a leather belt. Maybe it's because his ears are cartoonishly large. Or maybe, just maybe, it's because he's noticed that the band logo looks like an upper-middle-class child's first uninspired attempt at train station graffiti. Next was 1991's Considered Dead, which is considered their best album by a small fraction of people, admittedly. This artwork was done by the lovable and huggable Dan Seagrave, and his attention to detail here really shows... There's a lot more information supplied here as compared to the artwork on the demo, and as such, I can make a much more accurate analysis. At the center of the room, which looks like either a basement or an unfinished garage, we see a corpse that is quite literally put on a pedestal, but there are still several other bodies floating in the water below. This hot slice off to the side here should be familiar to any fans of H.P. Lovecraft. This is Mamma Mia! the considering one, and as evidenced by the two hourglasses within the room, this charming little sweet pea has a small window of time for some given task. I wouldn't call it much of a stretch to assume that he's looking for an exposed ribcage to use as a xylophone for his big recital tonight, and he's clearly anxious to make the right decision. Mama Mia is maintaining his distance, watching from afar, and carefully considering each corpse. Thus, the corpses that have already been looked at are now the considered dead. Case closed, folks. But this was just the beginning of Gorgut's descent into wild and wacky behavior. Two years later, the world was graced with erosion of sanity. And hold that tongue of yours, my friend, I know what you're trying to say. Hey, Gonillock, isn't that just a picture of a public art museum after government funding was cut? <laughs> Funny you should ask. It is not even remotely close to that, and I'm going to have to ask you to refrain from cutting me off going forward, thank you very much. Boom! You see, this painting only lines up with one thing that I have ever seen in person. Only one establishment has this many bone-filled boxes surrounded by strange fauna and a swirling maelstrom of unknowable blackness, and that would be your average everyday mom-and-pop pet store. This shape here looks like a snake, or it could even be an animal shell of some kind. Up here we have an unusually large frog wiping mucus all over his hands like we aren't looking right at him, you disgusting beast! And this box seems to have a homeless Vietnam War veteran taking refuge from the elements until the pet store employees kick him out again. What pet store would be complete without this timeless classic? The album title Erosion of Sanity also lines up with the experiences of many Vietnam War veterans, so it's really a win-win here in terms of analysis. Moving right along, just as those charming Muppet characters tend to do, we arrive at 1998's Obscura, another full-length album that could be described as falling down a flight of stairs in audio form. It's a very technical and jarring collection of things that shouldn't fit together, and they don't, really, but it still manages to be coherent and captivating. As for the cover art, Obscura comes from the Latin word for darkened, or if you want to stretch that translation further, hidden. Hence the English derivative obscured. This cross-legged chap gracing the cover of the album is clearly in a darkened room, just as the title implies. Case closed, right?
No, you horrendous bastard idiot. Sit back down and let me do my job. This is clearly a statue of a decrepit old man, weakened and enfeebled by his old age, and with his impending death in such close proximity, he has become desperate to fulfill the innermost desires of his that his younger self did not have the audacity, the bravado, or the sheer depravity to even address. This man, who admittedly looks like a pig in this awkward lighting, wants to show the world the lesser-known angles of his flesh, the parts of his limbs and his chin that the general population rarely gets to appreciate. And so, he has entered this dark room and cast the light very carefully, displaying to all the most obscure and unflattering surfaces of his skin. Now the case is closed. From wisdom to hate. Awesome album, I must say, but the artwork tells a cautionary tale. Pictured front and center is our hero, whose name has long since been lost to time. This wise old fellow existed in a time before dentistry was developed enough as a science to be safe or practical, and so there were certain problems that he just had to live with. He had a chipped tooth on the right side of his mouth, there were a few neglected cavities here and there as well, but most importantly, his wisdom teeth were allowed to grow unrestricted. And with no restriction on his wisdom teeth, as such there was no restriction on his wisdom. Our nameless hero pondered the skies above then and the soil beneath his ripe, leathery toes. He pondered the oceans. He pondered the winds. He pondered why consuming impulse is so much better than testimony of the ancients. He pondered why people think it's okay to livestream entire concerts on Instagram, the point being that he was as wise as they come. Truly a great thinker, or at least he was a great thinker, until the sinister Cinnamon Brothers came to town and shot his face, knocking out his eyes, his nose, and his wisdom teeth. After losing his teeth, he lost all the wisdom that he acquired with them, and the nameless one was left only with his hatred for the Cinnamon Brothers, and his hatred for people who livestream entire concerts on Instagram because you don't need to be a hermit philosopher to know that that sort of behavior is totally unacceptable and should be punishable by immediate euthanization and mummification. After about twelve long years without any new material, Gorguts then emerged from the shadows and debuted Colored Sands in 2013, which, uh, this is the wrong picture, I apologize. Yes, Colored Sands, that name is pretty uninspired and straightforward, but hey, it's their first album after over a decade, I'm willing to cut them some slack. And finally, we have Pleiades Dad, an ambitious return to the tale of our nameless friend here. It would seem that during Gorgot's extensive period of inactivity, the nameless possessor of great wisdom had something of a return to form. He buckled down, pulled himself up by the bootstraps, regrew his nose, and ascended to an even higher plane of knowledge than he had ever reached before. The pinnacle of human knowledge. So wise that he could read Arabic now, and build a compass on his forehead. But those sinister cinnamon brothers, you remember these blokes, they weren't about to let their enemy just rebound like that. And so they returned as well, this time accompanied by the infamous Tummy Twins, and aimed their arrows right for his nose. It is apparent from the arrows all over the face that their aim is atrocious, but it's not like the guy has any limbs to defend himself with. What is he gonna do, hire some disembodied hands to tear apart the only surviving copy of the Tummy Twins memoir? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the madman did it. But I'm afraid that the Nameless One's days are numbered nevertheless, for the archers have dipped their arrows into Pleiades' dust, which will cause him to sneeze so violently that his nose and all of his teeth fall out permanently. The Pleiades is a cluster of stars that is famous for being featured in some Native American folklore as well as Greek mythology, but in the context of this album, Pleiades is the name of a stuffed rat that has been festering under Luke LeMay's bed for countless ages. Speaking of lying underneath Luke LeMay's bed, I have places that I need to be. Thank you for tuning into the second installment of Corrupted Cover Art. If you've got any suggestions for the next band to have their discography featured on Corrupted Cover Art, let me know in the Report User section. Until next time, my dear, sweet, faceless ones, I am Gonillock, and I bid you all an enjoyable time in the carnal state. <laughs>